Garden Story is a new RPG that stealthily dropped on the PC and Nintendo Switch this month. It mixes a fun story, vibrant world, and charming characters, bringing us an interesting gem to add to our library. The question is though, is it going to be a sweet or a sour experience for you? Here are 5 things you need to know before you buy Garden Story. Hi friend, I'm Stephanie aka Miss Bubbles and I create weekly videos covering reviews, sales, before you buys, and so much more. Consider squishing the like and subscribe button so you never miss a bubbly video again. So Garden Story is a let's say light action RPG game. You start off by receiving a pick to help you in combat and it's relatively weak but so are you. In addition to that you have your health as well as dew which is the game's name for a health potion. As I said you are pretty weak at first with minimal health and minimal stamina. Stamina is pretty important because you need it to hit the enemy, dodge, run and forge items. As you progress through the story you unlock something called memories and these are your skills or abilities that you can add but in this game they go by the name of of memories. They are unlocked by pretty much playing the game and completing missions. They also designate how Concord as a newly graduate is getting accustomed to the new role and responsibilities and learning to become a hero on his own. For instance, the first memory you unlock is related to Plum, the former guardian which you are replacing. Her memory gives you two health points and one stamina recharge at the cost of losing two luck. This applies to pretty much all memories. They all come with costs and benefits. It's just like life, to be honest, you know? Our memories do have their own costs and benefit. We're getting philosophical with Miss Bubbles today. In the beginning, you can only have one memory activated at a time, but eventually you can activate several, which will make you drastically more powerful. You can also have a variety of weapons and tools to use. And what I like the most is that tools are usually used for gathering items in other games, but here they serve a purpose in battle as well. For instance, your pick is good for cutting down stumps, but also killing enemies. So is the hammer. Want to know more? Well, your fishing rod lets you gather things deep in the ocean, but also helps you take the shells off of enemies, making them easier to defeat. Of course, these can all be upgraded in shops by paying money as well as gathering the necessary items. One thing I'm gonna say is that combat is a little bit clunky and it will take you a little bit of time to get used to it. This was especially frustrating during boss battles, specifically the first one. I had to redo the battle over 10 times because I could not get the hang of the damn controls. However, once you get used to it, it just clicks. Yes, if you are stuck fighting an enemy, use the damn shield that you get and don't be a bubble butt like I was. And use the items that they give you, they all serve a purpose, I promise. They are pretty hard, but if you use the damn tools, you'll be fine. Oh, and you can buy backpacks and hats to customize Concord in the cutest ways possible. Finally, you have a house in which you can rest to save your game and progress to the next day, a village donation box, a wardrobe, and a few more things in every village. You play as Concord, the newly appointed guardian of the grove after Plum, the current but also now previous guardian who decides to move on to another village in order to fulfill her duties over there. As such, you graduate from being a kindergarten crepe to a grapeness who has different responsibilities on your shoulder. As the guardian, you wake up to daily tasks found on the quest boards as well as having to follow the main quest line and contributing to the community and helping defeat the rock. These are the enemies that are trying to take over the world. The daily tasks help you level up the village slash town you are in regarding three categories, which are conflict, maintenance, and forage. Conflict usually has you going around defeating X amount of enemies in a certain area. Maintenance requires you to repair things like bridges and fences, whereas forage will have NPCs asking you for materials which you can drop in the forage box. Despite the fact that you cannot access these easily through your journal, you can find quest boards pretty much everywhere, so so you can always remember your daily chores. Once you complete these and go to bed, you will level up the town and get some money in your mailbox. Tasks can get repetitive, but for me, it was in a fun way. To be honest, I was easily addicted to the loop that the developers were trying to bring here, so it's safe to say that Miss Bubbles was pretty engaged in this title.
You can also accept favors to complete and these are assigned to you by NPCs. You can find them with an exclamation point above their head. To add to the contribution system, you have several village storage boxes in which you can donate stone and wood. Though I'm not completely sure how this benefits you as a player, but I do remember unlocking an achievement badge on Steam for it. Another thing that lets you contribute to the community is that every village has some sort of collection that needs to be fulfilled. This is kind of like Stardew Valley's community center. For instance, in the first village, you unlock a library and to bring back all the lost books, you need to donate certain items like stone, pebbles, sticks, and such to magically let the books reappear. I really dislike puzzles in games and that's probably why I don't like games like Zelda. I can hear you keyboard ninjas trying to write all of your hate comments right now, but hey, I'm honest. I just don't like puzzles in games. When I play a game, I want to have fun rather than be stuck trying to figure out how to unlock a certain door or align different elements together. <laughs> Breath of the Wild. <laughs> However, in Garden Story, the puzzles are not difficult at all. They were pretty simple, so really all you have to do is turn on or off certain lights at the same time or step on different tiles to activate them, things like that. If you're like me and not too keen on puzzles, there's nothing to worry about. If I was able to solve them it's probably going to be a piece of cake for you and really i think these were included just to add a little bit more intrigue to the game and a little bit of fun rather than frustrate you as a gamer which is always a welcome feature for me before we continue let's announce our bubbly of the week and this goes to flower angel rave thank you for all the engagement and support that you offer this channel i'm delighted to have you as part of my bubbly community if you want to be the star in our next video all you have to do is pretty much just engage in the comments and let me get to know you a little bit more. Now let's get back to our video. I cannot begin to explain how amazing the music was. If you know me by now, music sets the mood for me. In Garden Story, I couldn't help but put on my headphones to enjoy the vibe that the developers were trying to create. What was amazing though, is that after I stopped playing, I would find myself humming the tunes as I was going about my day. Just listen to how great this sounds. And this ties to the fact that the game does not only rely on the music to create a charming vibe, but it also highlights this in the graphics that it represents. The characters are cute and bubbly looking, the world is not too big, but it allows you to experience different vibes through different looking towns, and the color palette that is used is just gorgeous. I usually adore games that give me lots of colors, especially now when I barely have electricity and I have been seeing darkness more than normal. You also experience a day and night cycle with a weather system and this mixes things up a little bit and sets the tone for your in-game day. If you're wondering how big the map is, the game lets you unlock four villages, all of which are pretty small so it's not overwhelming at all. In addition, you can backtrack to previous areas to gather things that you maybe couldn't get in the beginning because you did not have the right tools. This was pretty satisfying, especially when I was going back to an area and remembering how weak I was as Kong Chord and also as a player and how far I've become. So is this game for you? First, let's get the price point out of the way. It is a $20 indie game. This indie game obviously has a lot of love that has been poured into it. If you are looking for a Stardew Valley, Harvest Moon, Story of Seasons kind of game, then no. This has no farming, no crafting, no romance, or any other life sim aspect. Garden Story is mostly an action-adventure RPG with life puzzle mechanics, a beautiful story about growing up and having responsibilities, shining the light on how friends can 
friends sometimes envy you, but also how other friends will support you and support your success and help you to be a better member of the community. I don't want you walking into this thinking that this is another Cozy Grove or Littlewood because it's not. Perhaps think of it as a fruity, simplistic Zelda title that is perfect for a cozy night in bed or relaxing time after work. I can wholeheartedly say that I feel the developers really did pour all of their passion creating this and it's such a cute and different experience that I highly invite you to play. Are you going to buy Garden Story? If yes or not, let me know down in the comment section. I love talking to you guys. We always have a fun conversation and I make sure to reply to everybody's comments. Don't forget to leave a like and if you're feeling extra generous today, then maybe subscribe. It's a wonderful day to play a cozy game. Stay bubbly, stay positive, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!